So now I go and delete it. It can't delete it. It tells me there may be employees. So I don't get the ugly error message. It, I get the, the nice error message. Let's go in. Let's put a couple more dummy people in here. Or dummy departments. So that we can go through and delete those. successful, deletion successful, deletion successful, and eh, can't delete it, there may be bad. Let's go back and rewind this because, again, um, I am not sure if it's the version of uh, ASP.NET that I'm running here or the way it's configured or because we're using C Sharp, but I sure remember this as being easier in VB. Easier in the sense that it gave you more help and more IntelliSense. So let's review what I did. All right. I did the following. I created a, in the code behind file a function called SQL, da SQL data source one underscore deleted. And that gets these arguments. I didn't make up these arguments. These are the arguments that the framework is going to give that deleted event. All right. I then wrote my code in the deleted event to look to see if it got passed as part of the event arguments an exception. If there's an exception, I'm sorry, if there's no exception, I'm going to display that the deletion was successful. Otherwise, I'm going to display that there was a problem with the deletion, and then I'm going to tell the framework, hey, I've handled that exception. Now the last thing that you have to do here is whoops, you have to specify as part of the UI what is the name of the function. Oops, that's the wrong one. What is the name of the function that handles when it's deleted? So SQL data source one deleted, that matches the name of the function I created. So I can create this function all I want to, but that control needs to know, hey, when you delete something, call this function and pass it the appropriate arguments and let it do its thing. For those of you that may have done this kind of coding in VB before, for contrast, you might have some of the confusion I, I had for, uh, for a second. VB uses like names by convention, it appears, all right, and simply by selecting that event, we can go and we can define that event, whereas in C Sharp, you have to define and you have to associate that event with the appropriate control uh, via the on-delete uh, parameter. At least that's what it seems to be doing. Yes. Yeah, Norad said when we first started the C Sharp class is not as helpful as we Yeah, it's not as helpful as, as that. And I think I kind of knew that, but I kind of forgot about it until I didn't see my list of, of things. So still not that terribly hard. Really what you have to know is you have to know what arguments get past that event. Well, you have to know what events are available, what arguments get past to that event, and then you have to be sure you go in and associate your control to um, to the function that you've defined. Yes? If you were in the design view, would there have been anything in that menu to help you do this? Uh, if you're in the design view, is there anywhere in there? You code, that'll just take you to the code. Configure, refresh properties. Doesn't seem to be. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be anything in there that would help you with that. Yes? Can you go back to the source view of this one? Yeah. Really, the key thing here that I changed 
is I put an undeleted event. What that means is when the deleted event fires, call this function. function then has our little snippet of code that checks to see if there's an exception. If there's not an exception, it says that the deletion was successful. If it was, uh, if there was an exception, um, formats the text in a meaningful way, you know, de deletion failed, there may be employees associated with that because that's sort of our best guess as to why it, it can't be deleted. And then telling the .NET framework that we've handled this exception by setting the exception handle to true. questions about this. All right. Um, what we'll do next time is we'll look at, you know, we'll, we can do the same thing for updated. That's not a problem. You know, in fact, we could probably just copy this code, make a couple tweaks to it, and get the updated working. Um, we will then look at how to confirm the deletion, which really doesn't take that long to do. You could probably Google it and, and find it. Last thing that we're going to do then in this section is what if we don't want a text box when we edit? What if we wanted a drop down or something like that? How would we create that? And we'll look at, at how you do that. Um, then we'll start looking at inserts. By the way, just about everything I've said about grid views also applies to details views as well. So you could go in and you could put an insert associate, or uh, I'm sorry, an update or delete associated with a grid view, uh, details view, and it would work pretty much like this. Same idea. You'd have to put it in the data source, the, the SQL statement, and then you'd have to configure the details view to allow deletion and so on. All right. We'll pick up on this on Thursday. Can you post that URL right there? Oh. <laughs> no, but you can find it. You can Google it. Yeah. It, it'll, it'll be good practice.